Welcome to the all-new Marvel Roundup, the Southgate Media Group Guide to the Marvel Comics of the Week. As always, I am Phil Perch, joined by... Charlie Esser! Alright, Charlie, you got a lot of books this week. What did you read? Oh, okay. Well, starting off with some old ones that have been sitting in my in my poll box for a while. So let's start with those. Let's start with Red Wolf number two. Um... You know, I really, uh, you know, I, I kind of, I felt this, uh, here's what I'll say. I felt disappointed by Red Wolf when we first uh, read it because it was, you know, it was a, um, I, I felt that they had really did a great job setting up timely mm-hmm. and then had us leave timely almost immediately. Uh, and this takes place in what we're assuming is our modern 616 universe. And it opens up with uh, a guy who's being poisoned by a rattlesnake. Uh, by this guy who's a snake ha- handler of some sort. Um, we see later he's got a ganked up face. He might be someone that I just am not unfamiliar with, but anyway. Uh, basically, this guy uh, by the name of Bly wants to take over the town, buying up everyone's property. Classic Western plot line, rich guy buying everyone up and using an enforcer to remove the obstacles in his way. Meanwhile, Red Wolf has just awoken in on the edge of somebody's property on a city street or a town street. Cause it's a small, small town in New Mexico, I believe. Uh, Santa Rosa, New Mexico, if I recall correctly. Uh, and he and these kids uh, sort of think uh, he's some crazy drug addict or something. Um, and then he sees a semi truck and a jet plane. And he's like, what the heck? And throws up. Uh, and they call the cops. Meanwhile, the sheriff... Uh, is up there talking to the mayor, who is, you know, the mayor is saying, you know, okay, we did what you wanted, you know, we we sit we sit in the north south corridor for, a, for for the drug trade, we did what you wanted, we cracked down on the cartel just like you directed us to, cut them off at the knees, but now there's a void, and a void with every street gang between El Paso and Denver wants to move in here like ants on a fallen Dorito. Uh, it says we need more help, and the mayor says, "Ah, you can handle it, you know." And we basically see that apparently the police force of this town um, is two people: an old, an, an old African American sheriff with a white mustache, and a uh, Lat- Latina uh, deputy uh, who has been sent out to look at the vagrant uh, that the kids called in. And, you know, they're saying, saying, man, we've got all these drug dealers and I'm wasting time with some vagrant. Uh, basically, he's talking to him, uh, realizes this guy seems several bubbles off level. They uh, kindly um, <clears throat> uh, remove his gun <laughs> and they start driving to take him downtown uh, to get a psyche valve when, of course, the sheriff calls in for backup because... Uh, a couple of hillbillies are um, cooking some meth and are defending their meth lab uh, with with extreme prejudice. Uh, we find out that there is a uh, that one of the uh, local meth meth groups is a family. Where they said they were the Carsons. Um, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, Carson, Carson boy. Because anything where there's meth, there's a Carson. Um, they're getting pinned down by the uh, by uh, the rednecks. They've got uh, a, a lot of ammo, and then Red Wolf sees it's time to be a superhero. So he kicks out the window of the squad car, jumps up with his hands still cuffed in front of him. By the way, he, they were behind him. Now they're in front of him. Um, hops up, takes out the takes out the Carson boy, and then takes out uh, the the uh, other redneck who gets a shot off just grazing the sheriff. Um, you know, uh, basically, you know, um, you know, uh, hmm. um, he's saying he needs to speak to Mayor Danvers. They say, you know, there is no Mayor Danvers here. So this is the year 2007. Oh, he says, yeah, it says the, the, the uh, mayor, the, the, the mayor has been here since 07. He says, oh, seven, what does that mean? He says, you know, it's uh, 2007, eight years ago, almost nine. Um, he says, I haven't, 2007, do you hear you mean? Mm-hmm. As opposed to what? And he says, cuckoo. 
And then he realizes, he says, that's what he did to me. That's, 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 that's somehow the killer. The killer sent him through time. And it says, yeah, best you, and the sheriff says, yeah, best you come with me, I think, Mr. Wolf, till we sort this out. And I do thank you again for what you did, stupid as it was. And then we see that Mr. Bly is, does not like a bunch of other drug dealers on his turf. So we see that the guy with the messed up face and his uh, associate, Mr. Box, who, of course, is, has the box filled with snakes, um, <laughs> Tells tells these you know young men who are running this uh, little drug gang that you know uh, don't worry you can survive a snake bite. Um, I, I really liked it actually. It, it, you know, um, as I said, you know there was um, you know one of my favorite what ifs was uh, you know uh, Conan trapped in uh, the modern age, nineteen mm-hmm. eighties, and this has a bit of that vibe of the you know you know sort of the uh, Ubermensch out of time. Um, and uh, I'm 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 glad I picked up number two, and I'm looking forward to see where it goes. I do hope that somehow we get something back in timely. But you know, I think I can deal with Red Wolf where it is. Interestingly enough, no one's mentioned any other superheroes yet. So you know, of course, this is Santa Rosa, New Mexico. I don't know how many superheroes they get out there. Okay, <laughs> that was my first book. Second book I'm going to read, also an old one. Uh, I can't even remember where this one came from. This is Shield number one. Of the new Shield, inspired by the hit TV series Agents of Shield, um, it opens up with uh, Iron Man breaking into the Pentagon. Except it's not Iron Man; it's a guy in a knockoff, downloaded Iron Man armor. Because, of course, as we know, all of our, Tony's designs got hacked and posted on the internet. Mm-hmm. He's demanding to talk to Phil Coulson, and uh, may say he's in the middle of an interrogation. Uh, what May doesn't say is it's Phil's interrogation. He's being beaten up by a defunct, uh, by a, a rogue group of AIM, uh, uh, of AIM scientists who had taken over a uh, def- defunct Project Pegasus facility. Um, you know, uh, he's basically explained to them that he, you know, he was here because he found out their location, uh, he, that he uh, 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 illegally obtained the location of this f- facility, and this is Tolkien. And that intel being, you know, illegally obtained, I had to confirm its veracity, Asimov. I mean, you don't just go guns blazing into a potentially empty ex-government facility, am I right? Heinlein says, why are you doing that? Doing what? Saying those other things. What? The authors? Oh, the authors, Tolkien, Asimov, and Heinlein. They're my favorite writers. They're also the code names for my three strike teams. And then we see that Leo Fitz has dis, uh, disabled their security protocols. Daisy Johnson and Mockingbird, Team Heinlein, are coming uh, from the sky. Meanwhile, Henry Hayes, a.k.a. De- Deathlock, um, and Gemma Simmons are, are uh, infiltrating the location and... Um, refers to Simmons as the package, and she says, would you please stop calling me the package? Um, <laughs> uh, they are looking to find the evil, uh, you know, hypervirus that they, that AIM has been working on here. Um, Gemma's going to make it inert. Uh, and a AIM agent comes in, uh, flash burns, deathlock, and as, Emma, as Gemma's uh, working on the virus uh working working faster the bad guy torches the virus and uh uh Gemma says Heinlein to library i've rendered the dna bomb harmless though not without a bit of difficulty um library i might have an overdue book and then of course um colson comes in with a big ray gun says look what i found just lying around on my way out of lockup <sighs> and um they uh get together they um, they say, you know, we lost our we, we lost our, our our plane, but I think you're gonna like what we found instead. And they have an old uh, Fantastic Four jump jet that they <laughs> take back to uh, the Shield battle carrier Parakeets, um, where they're going over um, what uh, where um, Phil Coulson is talking to Stark, uh, being debriefed, and he says, um, you know, there was one affiliated name. Associated with uh, w- with the break in, um, and what do you think the name is, Phil? Hmm. Death through Shield. Well, it has to do with the series TV Shield. 
And uh, specifically, well, let me put it this way. The person is, was, was uh, Phil's ex fiance. What do you think Phil's ex fiance's name was? Oh, was it, um, is it the violin player? No, no, no. This is someone, this is a woman at the Department of Defense. That, oh, so, uh, is it, um, uh, the one Ward just killed not too long ago? Uh, no, not her. No, it's Lola. Oh. Uh, Lola Daniels. Um, uh, so Phil has to go interrogate Lola. Meanwhile, and this is interesting, we get May and Fitz. Fitz is being trained by May, and Fitz is completely macking on her, asking her out <laughs> on a date. Fitz and May, man. It, it's no Fitz Simmons. It's Fitz May here. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, and they agree to go out on a date. Meanwhile, uh, Phil in Lola goes meets, meets Lola Mark One. Um, where they start talking, start flirting, but then, you know, get into, you know, what was stolen. You know, I do have my business to do and, um, you know, but they do share their wine and then they kiss because, you know, they are two red blooded American, uh, spies, uber spies and they have their needs. Meanwhile, Gemma is, uh, going over, uh, these items that says, you know, triple encrypt at Project Pegasus and fell post six hours, subject experienced first symptoms. Nausea, headache, excessive sweating. Symptoms could be explained by any number of benign physiological or psychological causes. But when subject began experiencing exsanguination from eyes, I ordered a full blood panel, CBC, Chem 7, toxicology results are consistent with exposure to the DNA bomb bioweapon. I project subject has less than one month to live. And we see that the exsanguination is on. Simmons. Meanwhile, uh, the next day, and apparently they slept on the couch for some reason rather than going through the bedroom, but who knows, maybe that's a comics code thing. Um, what Phil gets code? up, puts on his pants, and uh, sits down at Lola's computer, and she sneaks up behind him with a gun and because he's trying to find out what was on, what was stolen, and it was a high-capacity dadded storage device called a quantum drive. And he says, containing what? And he says, you understand the Department of Defense sees everyone and everything as a potential threat. That's part of their job. Containing what, Lola? That's classified. Wonderful. Then the only people who know about it are the Pentagon and the man who sold it. Let me help you stop him, Lola. What's on the cotton drive? Protocols, a comprehensive list of effective tactics and vulnerabilities. Basically, everything one would need to eliminate anyone on the target list. And who's on the target list? Every major superhero on the planet, in case any one of them, any of them ever went rogue. Department of Defense wanted a foolproof strategy for how to take them down with prejudice. Does that sound like a pretty tall order? Who developed this? I mean, who has the, the, the kind of knowledge necessary to work this out all in the first place? And who do you think has that knowledge, Phil? Hmm. Again, is it someone? It's someone from S.H.I.E.L.D., yes. Ward? Nope. Phil. Ah, oh. Phil, so, you know, because they they had established this all along, all along. Uh, you know, where you're saying, oh, you know that, you know, the Quicksilver could kill the Hulk, and this is how you would do this, and you know, that's been Phil's whole thing in this in the series. So they turn out that basically they've data mined all of his ideas, and now they know how to take out every superhero on the planet. Didn't he learn anything from Batman? You know, Batman's like the one on DC who would uh, keep all those plans, yeah. and then they get except, stolen. Yeah, except Batman still has all those plans, so you know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And of course, yeah, no, I mean, yes, very much stolen from uh, that episode of uh, of the Super Friends, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or Justice League. I'm sorry, yes, yeah, but um, which I'm sure was a comic book first too. Although I don't know if it had had as awesome of a cyborg uh, plotline in it. But anyway, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> thumbs up for Shield number one. Um, uh, you know, probably probably kind of comes close to almost being a pick of the week for me, which kind of surprised me because a lot of people. You know, I think this is one of those books that just hit, hits you in your nerd spot. Hmm. You know, the idea that subtle stuff gets called back, and I liked it. Hmm. So, give me one of your books, Phil. <laughs> All right, I will start with Star Lord number three. Uh, opens up with uh, Peter and Yondu talking, and uh, Peter wants Yondu to help him. Uh, Peter wants a uh, Badoon ship, uh, so I guess he wants his own ship, and. Uh, Yondu's telling him, he's like, what would you even do if you had your own ship? And he's just all like, <laughs> he gives him, he gives him a very, uh, uh, 
big talk on life. He's like, uh, he's like, uh, about how space isn't, it's not complicated. It's just a big nothing. And, uh, he's like, uh, very occasionally it's in space is just very occasionally punctuated by something of interest. Could be treasure or it could be something that threatens to take the air out of your lungs. He's like, steal one, avoid the other. <laughs> uh, then they get to talking about Peter's mom and her friend. And, uh, Peter starts to tell what you want to do about the, uh, ship that NASA was making with the, uh, four warp drives. And, uh, Yondu decides he wants that ship and Peter's not sure he wants to help him steal it. But Yondu's like, Hey, you want a ship? I want a ship. We can help each other. Uh, and then Yondu telling Peter about a deal he has going down and he can come with them. Uh, then it says they're planet side, but it never really says what planet they're on. Uh, Peter kind of sours the deal Yondu had, I guess, for some for some rare gems he was going to buy. Uh, like to line them up on his dashboard. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're standing on top of a building. He kind of, Peter kind of knocks the one guy over and the other, his partner thinks they were going to, they were wanted to, you know, they wanted to steal from him, but they really didn't. So he le- the partner leaps off the building and lands on, on like a flying bus, you know, I guess all the, all the transportation is like cover stuff is so Peter and Yondu jump on the bus, they take off after him. Uh Peter decides to try to make it right and he tackles the guy, tackles him through like the skylight of a restaurant. And Yondu's like stop him, but Peter like Peter can't stop him and uh Yondu's ready to like send them back to the ship until he shows uh Peter shows Yondu, well I I couldn't get, I couldn't tackle him, but I got this out of his pocket. Did I do good? And I guess it was the uh Jem Yondu was looking for. He's like, good. He's like, you did great. So they run off as the the police break in and they run off. And uh, they, I guess they decide to go have a good time. So there's just like scene, like panels of them fighting and drinking. And there's even a panel of Peter making out with some blue octopus looking female alien. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, the tentacles. But, yeah. Uh, hey, <laughs> it's a very big industry for that. So, yeah, they even, <laughs> don't they even mock get, it. <laughs> then we get some time in for uh, some karaoke and uh, I don't know, I guess I don't know if Peter hit a soft spot f- with Yondu because he tells him he's going to make him a full-time Ravager. Oh. <laughs> uh, then they're going to go after the he tells him, I know where to find your Badoon spaceship. Uh, but then he's, t- but then he's telling him uh, you know, well, Peter's going to help us get that, that ship from Earth too and uh, because they're like, oh, it's the first time they're, you know, the Earthers are leaving the planet. They'll be easy pickings. And uh, <laughs> Peter's like, well, I don't know. And Gandhi's like, what do you care if they blow their dumb mission? He's like, screw, the, screw those flarknards. <laughs> uh, so Peter kind of a, gr- begrudgingly agrees to help them steal the ship. And uh, the last page, they're all screaming to Petey Quill. And he's like, don't blow, Peter. This is your big chance. <laughs> to be continued. Uh it's good. I'll give it a thumbs up. I don't know if I'm going to continue with this series. It's it's a nice enough little book, but there once again, there are so many Marvel books. I mean, just this month, Captain Marvel started up. Old Man Logan started up. Uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man starts next week. There's just so much stuff. And I'm trying to remember if there was other books coming out, but... Yeah. No, you're killing, I mean, you're killing yeah, us, Marvel. Us. Yeah. Uh, you know, they want their money, man. Uh <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's, you know, for me, you know, I mean, what's what's hard for me on, on that is that, you know, it's a prequel book that's, you know, kind of ignoring its own continuity. And, yeah, you know, that that's, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm all for playing fast and loose with continuity. But when you're basically just saying we're just going to go off of what the movie is now, it's, you know, eh, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> it's not quite not not quite where, where you where, where you felt comfortable with it. But, you know, yeah, I guess. That's I one guess, of the reasons. Yeah. I guess that's what the kids want these days. Okay. <laughs> so, speaking of a lot of books, um, let's hop on to Illuminati, number three. When last we left our intrepid villains, they were trying to fight their way out of the Hellfire, uh, the Fenris, cl- Club Fenris, where the um, Strucker twins, uh, the Von Strucker twins, had put a bounty on their head because Black Ant went and blew up a scientist for no... <laughs> Good reason at all, really. Um, you know, and as I had previously said, a lot of these guys seem like kind of B-rate supervillains. I mean, um, you know, there's the Grey Gargoyle there. You have, uh, looks like one of the Street Sharks. I don't know. 
Uh, basically, Titania does a fastball special with um, with uh, Thunderball, throws him through um, the ceiling so that they can get out to the street. Um, the Enchantress brings uh, um, uh, the um, Black Ant and um, and uh, the Hood back through. Um, you're a Spider-Man guy. Does does Tombstone have any powers? Um, he. Back in the early 90s, I think he was exposed to some gas or something, and it, it, it kind of gave him a little bit of super strength, and I think he was kind of, he, he got a little, he got a little yeah. boost in strength, and I think he's uh, like a limited vulnerability. Yeah, well, I'm guessing that's who he's fighting here, and he's uh, trying to, like, take on Thunderball, and so that doesn't go well for him. <laughs> you know, Thor villain versus Spider-Man, Spider-Man villain. It's, yeah, he's, he's not in Thunderball's class. Yes. Anyway, um, they all escaped upstate New York near the Roxxon Lab where the artificial Bifrost is. Um, Hood's about to shoot Black Ant, and Titania does not like that. And Hood basically says, oh, the Mad Tinker would have just built him a new body anyway. Um, <laughs> basically, she's saying, you know, if you ever try something like that on one of us again, I will. Uh, she says, you'll what to it, Titania. And Thunderbolt breaks it up, and they basically all... You know, Hood says, "Look, they're gonna they're gonna change their protocols real soon. We'll be back here at midnight. Uh, we'll bust in if you're not here. Then you know, to heck with y'all." Um, meanwhile, Thunderball is hanging out with his girlfriend because um, um, we get sort of like everyone's little bits of domesticity here, um, and uh, you know, they're talking. You know, he's saying how he had to work late and yada yada, and um, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, the Enchantress says, you know, does she know Elliot? Why are you following me, Enchantress? You didn't answer my question. She knows enough. She says, so a supervillain groupie. He says, do I look like Electro? Nah, she, which I just loved. <laughs> nah, she thinks I've given up on the life. Breaks my heart lying to her, but she'd flip if she knew I was running with the hood again. So I answered your question. You, you're going to answer mine. He asked why, why she was following her. He says, if we go along with the Hood's plan, I need someone I can trust besides me. A large part of, and besides, a large part of being a god is people watching. Seeing humanity struggle is one of my favorite pastimes. Um, and he says, uh, you know, we barely know each other, but you can drop the act with me, okay? He says, you think this is an act? Listen, I remember what it was like before I had my powers. It's crazy frustrating when they start to not work and a bit scary when you lose them. If you want to have a friend on this crazy scheme with the hood, that's all you got to say. This is just that being a god was my everything, and I wasted it before. The things I will do when I get my full powers back. The ten realms will tremble. Uh, so anyway, they agree they're going to go through this. Uh, the mad thinker is getting very frustrated because he, technology he's dealing with is inferior. It's not as far as he wants to go. Uh, Black Ant is getting another tattoo because he basically just likes to <laughs> tear apart these bodies of his because he knows he's just going to build a new one. Um, and he, right now he's got like he's got like half robot face, half uh, skin, and uh, oh, they got got to give it to the Marvel Universe tattoo artist. Not even not even blinking at that, you know. It's like okay, it says you know, uh, it says it says what what do you want this time? It says how about something cute like a cat in a top hat. <laughs> Uh-huh. Um, Titania is at a sushi bar. The hood comes to talk to him. They're talking about, you know, you know whether or not you can ever have a truly, you know, domestic life. And she's basically, you know, hood saying, you know, I got a kid and my wife won't talk to me. Yada yada yada. So, you know, and basically saying, no matter what we do, they're never going to let us rest. Either we're criminals or we're wanted criminals. You know, um, and it says. They're going to knock down our door eventually. I'd rather it was a mansion than some some hovel of an apartment. Anyway, at the end, they all come together. You know, the hood thinks they deserted him, but then they all show up. And they all agree they're going to go break in. But, of course, they need a distraction. And as luck would have it, a distraction shows up. Um, and it is Thor. Um, this is a band of merry thieves storming the villainous Roxxon. My instincts have me believe you're not here of noble intentions. Uh, next issue, Thor versus Titania, round two. So that uh, that was fun. 
Um, I'll give it a thumbs up. You know, I actually really like the characterization in here. I like the way that they're um, exploring everybody's motivations. And like I say, this it, it's such a great way to look at it of not people trying to go straight, but people just trying to have some semblance, some semblance of normalcy within a world of super villainy. And uh, I like that. Uh, yeah, so very much thumbs up on that one. And then the next book I'm going to give you is... Anywhere and everywhere, hang on, Silver Surfer number one uh, by the L Reds and Dan Slott. Um, I gotta say, you know, you know the L Reds artwork. It is such a interesting minimalist style. I really love it. You know, mm. it does have this very old school Marvel look to it, um, like Kirby almost. Yeah, sort of. You know, except not. You know, it's yeah. Uh, you know what I say? It, it's yeah, it, it, it's so hard to describe because what it is is it looks like a comic book from the '60s, mm-hmm. but it doesn't specifically resemble any any comic book artist from the '60s um, skills. Anyway, um, uh, um, oh, I always keep on forgetting her name. I want to say her name is Dottie. Um, uh, uh, so yeah, um, so uh, Don, sorry, Don, Don Greenwood, Don Greenwood. So we open up with Don Greenwood's father and sister at their little bed and breakfast, and uh, I want to say it's Maine somewhere. And the father, he's looking at the stars. He sees a shooting star and says, "Oh, do you think that's her?" And Eva's saying, "Stop wishing, Dad. That's not Don. She'll come home when come home when she's comes home. Now come inside. It's freezing out here." And it says, "And stop checking the news. They won't know. They won't know either." But of course, turns on the news and the screen grizzles out and uh, alien face shows up. People of Earth, we are the Hordax. We have come to your planet to plunder its greatest resource. And there is nothing you can do to stop us. Accept this and live. Defy us. Interfere in any way. And we shall reduce you all to ash. This is your one and only warning. Remember, resistance is... Then Kazak Kazao, as the Silver Surfer bursts into their ship, it says, there it is. Don, as my cosmic sense is detected, go ahead. Um, is this thing on? Hi, sorry about this. We saw that these guys were transmitting to Earth. See, I don't have a phone with me or anything. And I had to call in and say, hi, Dad. Hey, Eve. Just wanted to let you know the Surfer and I are heading back to Earth. So I'll be home soon. Yay. Well, that's about, well, that's all. Should see you both in about three Earth days. Till then, kisses. <laughs> and so Silver Surfer and Dawn fly out of the ship. And then, uh, but as they fly, the uh, Cordax leader says, cannot allow this to be the end. Must call in reinforcements. Dun, dun, dun. They arrive to Earth. And then they go, I'm sorry, Ma- Anchor Bay, Massachusetts. That's where the bed and breakfast is. And they arrive. And Eve and... Uh, Don meet up, and they realize they both have cut their hair the same way. Eve and Don are twins, by the way. And, oh, I just got that. Eve and Don. Um, and, uh, you know, and Lauren says, that's, how did, how did the two of you do that? We were off in deep space for months. He says, Lauren, Eve and I are twins. We share a special bond, even worlds away. We're in sync about everything. And Lauren says everything. And, of course, Eve is quite pregnant. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it turns out that since they've been gone, she's gotten married and got pregnant and she's missed New Year's and Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so her father decides to throw a um, happy new Hollow Givings birthmas Um, (laughs) because she also missed her birthday. And so they've got turkey and birthday cake and Halloween candy and Christmas tree and everything else. And they're having a wonderful feast and, Norn says, I've had turkey before, uh, Reg Greenwood, but never corn like that. It was candy corn, Nor- Norn. It went great with the Christmas ham and the birthday cake. Ooh, ooh, fun stuff. So they all decide to watch The Wizard of Oz. Um, and Norn gets up to leave and she says, Norn, we're going to say, I told you the last time we were on Earth. I've seen that film billions of times over and over in the transmission feeds around your planet. She says, yeah, but have you ever seen it with someone? So they're watching it, and they all start singing Rocks to the Wizard. But then, dun-dun-dun, the images off the screen sort of fade out, and all, and then suddenly all of the music and all of the art 
all over the world is being pulled from comic books and art museums and crazy spirally color patterns and everyone is forgetting everything they can't remember the wizard of oz and you realize that whatever is happening the imagination of the human the of human artworks throughout the centuries is being stolen <sighs> meanwhile <laughs> they go to the hordax ships and they realize that now these are hordax warriors that they're going to have to face plus they will be empowered by all of the greatest myths of human history. And suddenly the Hordaks are dressed as Doctor Who and Harry Potter and uh, the bride from Kill Bill. And I think that's supposed to be Mr. Bodo. Um, and they all and they all start doing battle with Nornrad, which is a pretty cool thing. As you can see, all these characters, there's Willy Wonka and uh, Han Solo and uh, Marty McFly. It's It gets crazy there. Um, and the Scarecrow, Cowardly Lion, and Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz. And um, Dawn realizes that, you know, she knows, she feels like she should know all these characters, but she doesn't. And then she gets the idea. She jumps off of a high platform, and the Scarecrow comes to save them. And she says, I look around you, and I just know most of you have too. You're more than heroes. You're friends, lifelong companions. I lived through you, learned right from wrong. These characters helped shape me, and now they're shaping you too, aren't they? A sound deduction, says Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> then, if that is true, you know you must give back what you have wrongfully taken. Then they say, very well, we release these treasures back into your world. But know this, for all our false blustered, our intentions here were noble. How so, Hordax? How was your thievery in any way honest? The Hordax are, are parasites, but we don't steal. We save and preserve. We had to make an enduring record of these tales before, before what you'll see, which is like totally cryptic and not helpful, Hordax. Um, you'll see soon. Farewell, Surfer. Uh, not not so long, Hordax, Hordax, and don't come back this way again. Oh, Norn, don't be like that. It was fun. We got to meet Sherlock Holmes and the Little Mermaid, sort of anyway. it was. It's, it's over now. Is it Don? Ask yourself, why would they need to preserve Earth stories and art unless, unless what? Something else was coming. And then we see on the planet Alanis, one star system away, these little green guys who I think are from like uh, some old 1960s Fantastic Four book. Uh, it's right on top of us. What of the others? It's too late for them. Ron, look, someone flies to our aid. One ship, who would dare? Can you not see in your mind, brother, one of our world's dearest friends, Benjamin J. Grimm, the thing? Put him up, you big bully. Ball of, the big bullying ball of goo. Let's see you try picking on somebody my size. Uh, he crashes into this big green ship and says, and then he sees that this boy crashes on the planet and the big green ship starts changing everything around it. All the buildings, architecture says, better get out of here quick before those crazy beams hit yours truly and change my kisser into something even more disgustifying. Hey, lay off. This was a brand new suit. The color, and he's wearing his Guardians of the Galaxy suit. The color went with my baby blues and the end everything. It says, please cease your complaining. You have been elevated, improved upon, blessed. Say it. I have been blessed. Thank you, mister. I am the keeper of the great truth, but you may call me keeper. I am unwilling, worthy of this blessing. No, all are deserving of this bounty. Tell me, what world do you hail from? Earth keeper. Arise, my converted, for you shall be my herald and lead the way so that we may bless your earth as well. Dun, dun, dun. Um, kind of exciting, really. Um, you know, I was actually kind of soft on picking this up till I saw there was a thing cameo, and uh, um, I was glad, you know, I'm glad I picked it up. Um, you know, uh, the Silver Surfer s series uh, previously was a little out there. I don't know if it's going to keep my attention for very long, but for right now it's got it. Thumbs up. Very good. Yep. What's your next one? All right. Um, I'll go with uh, Extraordinary X Men number six. Um, it opens up on Weird World. All the X Men are like, you know, like what's that? And Ileana Rasputin. Weird World. Yeah, Ileana Rasputin's like, well, that looks like fun, and they're all like, what's going on? And <laughs> Old Man Logan's like, I'm too old for this, please. And it turns out. <laughs> 
bunch of creatures that Iceman calls rhinosaurs. They look like dinosaurs with big rhino horns. <laughs> and Cerebra says, well, they do call this place Weird World, Iceman. And of course, Old Man Logan's like, and I thought the Savage Land was bad. <laughs> uh, and so Iceman says, Cerebra are the mutants we came to rescue close. And uh, Cerebra's like, her sensors are bit off because of the weirdness of the place. And uh, <laughs> Colossus asking Old Man Logan, isn't it fun to be back in action, Logan? And he's like, yeah, it's a regular party, Pete. Should have brought more beer. <laughs> uh, then they flash back to X-Haven five hours ago. Uh, everyone's trying to help Nightcrawler because whether it was Sinister or something happened before Mr. Sinister, Nightcrawler's kind of, had, I don't know, he's kind of, there's something wrong with his mind. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh... Meanwhile, so all the X-Men are standing around. The kids come in and Glob says hi to Gene. And Old Man Logan says, don't even think about it, X-Ray Specs. <laughs> uh, and Colossus comes out. He feels all useless because he can't help Nightcrawler. And Storm says, yeah, you've always been the protector and the big brother. She's like, maybe it's she's like there are other people who could use your guidance. And she's looking at the kids. Uh, then Ileana goes outside. And she's talking to Sapna, the new... Uh, little girl that just showed up not too long ago whose parents basically left her there because they were scared of her mutant powers but uh i guess i don't know her full extent of her powers but i guess she can make the demons of limbo a bear oh that's cool yeah but uh so her and Ileana go exploring limbo and uh Ileana's that's telling demon her, yeah. buddies yeah because Ileana's telling her as long as i possess the soul sword i rule limbo and sap is like not the other ones and Ileana's like, what other ones? She's like, the other realms, all the ones alongside this one. Who rules those? And Ileana's like, other realms? I don't understand. Sapna's like, don't you see the doors? And there's all these portals. And Ileana's like, oh my god, I, I do now. <laughs> but I guess one of those portals is the weird world. Where ah. Ileana says, magic is strong in this place. Uh, so they're fighting the troops who are riding the rhinosaurs. And uh, Colossus is like, speaking of games... What do you think, Logan? Time for a fastball special? <laughs> and old man Logan's like, I already told you, Metalhead, I'm too old for that crap. And Colossus <laughs> is like, oh, come on. So they do a fastball special, as Iceman says. Don't break a hip, old man. <laughs> <laughs> so they... Thank goodness the hips are still made of adamantium. Uh, yeah. So they take all those out and uh, go to look for the mutants, I guess, that are trapped on weird world world. Uh... Then they flash back again to X Haven where Colossus is talking to the kids and they're all like, All we get to do is sit around and you know and take care of the refugees. We're not like real X Men and Colossus is like, You want action glob? He's like, Alright, tomorrow we begin your training. Oh five hundred hours, danger room, don't be late. <laughs> uh and then we see Iceman talking to one of the kids, uh and I get I guess young it's Ice Man or old Iceman. This is uh old Iceman. Okay. But uh I guess he's he's telling the kid because cause the kid's uh, gay, but I guess he, since he's had time to think, I guess, I guess old Iceman's coming out of the closet too. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah. Because he was like, yeah, seeing the younger me face the truth head on, well, I realized that made me jealous. Well, there you go. He's not mad yeah. the students, is he? No, no, oh. I don't think. I think it's just, you know, someone who understands. But, uh... Okay, we're watching you, Marvel. You're doing some stuff we're not liking. That young, old man yoga and old, old man yoga and young Jean Grey not allowed either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So they show Ileana and Sapna again exploring the uh, portals, and uh, Ileana says, "I think we need to see Doctor Strange." But then Storm calls all the X Men for an emergency, uh, which must be Weird World because they flash back to Weird World, and uh, <clears throat> they're trying to track the mutants, but. Logan smells smoke, and then there's a big fire burning. And flashback to an hour ago, back at Xhaven, where uh, Storm's telling everyone Cerebra and Forge tracked a large group of mutants on the move from Asia. Remember that big, big clue, Asia. Asia. Uh, yeah, they were headed by air across the Atlantic when they disappeared. We have, believe inadvertently stumbled upon Weird World. That anomaly Cerebra found when she was surveying the movement of the Terrigen Cloud. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. 
Uh, so Storm says, I'm sending its team to find those mutants and bring them back to Exhaven. But Storm and Jean are staying behind because they're going to enter uh, Nightcrawler's mind, try to help him. Uh, because Jean's like, you and I, and Storm's like, yes, I don't think it's a good idea for you to go alone. Forge will link our minds, I'll be your backup. So the rest of them <laughs> get ready to go to Weird World. Iceman's like, road trip, let's suit up, guys. He's like, Logan, don't forget to pack extra denture cream and adult diapers. <laughs> uh, Poor old man Logan. Yeah, but, uh, so the X-Men are getting ready, but Logan, uh, well, Storm asks Logan to stay behind. She wants to talk to him, and uh, Storm's like, Forge, give us a minute. And he's like, there was a time we shared all our secrets, Storm. And she's like, there was a time we did many things, Forge. Times have changed. There you go. Uh, so Storm's like, I didn't want to tell the rest of the group, but uh, Cerebro was able to uh, identify one of the mutants that are on Weird World. She's like, it's someone very dangerous, someone who allied, uh, allied himself closely with Cyclops when he crossed the lines that he did. Mm -hmm. And Old Man Logan's like, what do you need me to do? And then they show the X-Men on Weird World putting out the fires and uh coming finding the group of mutants as uh back in the past storm's telling old man logan i will not turn away any mutant from x haven i made that promise and i intend to keep it but that does not mean i will trust him i need to know i can count on you logan if this mutant crosses the line if he threatens what we're building here i need to know you'll take care of him and who's that mutant luke uh who's that mutant charlie um remember the clues asia, oh, asia? And fire. Oh, it's Sunspot. Or not Sunspot. Sunfire. No, uh, what's his? Oh, the, oh. Sunfire, yeah. Sunfire, yes. Yeah, he used uh, to be part of the Unity Squad. Yep, but I guess he must have been working with Cyclops. But, so, uh, that's that's how the issue ends, but, uh, big oh, thumbs his, up. It was a, is his face hmm. all burnt up still? Uh, he has his mask on. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, it's hard to tell, yeah. Because I know that that happened at the end of the last, uh, Uncanny Avengers arc, he got all burnt up. Yeah, Save in the world. In, yeah, he's just in one panel when he has his mask on, so. Okay. Uh, well, hopefully you don't make Sunfire into a bad guy, because he was... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. So, okay. So, oh, sorry. That's <laughs> a little bit long. Uh, okay. Almost, I'm almost to books that came out this week. <laughs> but <laughs> my last old book, um... Hercules number three, and um, you know, um, what do I want to say about this book? It, it, it's a good book. It's definitely a thumbs up. So, I mean, honestly, you know, this is the thing. As I say, you know, when you're when you have these many books, you know, you're not going to buy it if it's if it's not going to, you know, if it's not already three quarters up from its from its uh, store read, you're probably not going to buy it. So, you know, yeah, the only way you're going to get to a uh, book that's really a thumbs down is if you know you're in the middle of an ongoing series and you just you can't break that up but you know i don't know if i have any books that are like that anymore the the only book that i've ever really felt that tied to was ff and they stopped making that so you know so if yep. if you disappoint me amazing spider-man as you did you get dropped so anyway but hercules did not disappoint this week although this is kind of a world building episode um although we do get a lot of revelations in this so Hercules facing the centaurs in Central Park. Um, battle, battle, battle. You know, Hercules is complaining that the uh, centaurs are pretty bad shots and they could accidentally hurt somebody uh, who was standing around. And then Hercules pulls a gun and he says, I'm a very... And they say, well, you're yelling at us, but you're going to shoot a gun. And he says, well, first off, it's, it's, these are, I guess, like super rubber bullets or something to knock them out but not kill them. And more to the point, He's a very good shot. Um, and, you know, as what, what's the issue with, uh, Theseus, um, or, or no, Theseus, And, uh, basically, you know, they're saying, you know, the rising storm is coming, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's replaced. And then they say, you know, these are new gods spawned by the modern age, new gods crafted to suit the greed and cravings of this toxic era. You seem to know little for the creature. For a creature of the old, perhaps the modern ways of the storm are already ingrained in you. He says, I he says, let me speak to Tiresias. Uh, he fears you. Let me get answers. What is your name? He says, I am Drassus, last, last hipparch of the centaurs. Lay low, Drassus. Make no trouble in this city. When I have answers, I will call again. 
I gave him a little flute to call him with, and uh, Hercules goes home to change. Um, of course, Gil is there sitting on the couch, uh, scratching his belly. He's a literal belly itcher, uh, as opposed to being a pitcher. And, uh, you know... And, you know, he, you know, Herc is trying to get Gil to come with him. He says, oh, verily, just, just so, um, you'd be better off calling, uh, Theseus or Rostum or maybe Beowulf. I'm a Beowulf. I'm a little out of practice. He says, could you get in practice? Could you, could you, do you think you're Gilgamesh for fate's sake, hero of Sumer, but you sit around all day in your underwear and says, ah, Gil, I am sorry. It's been a long day. Don't worry, I made some coffee. And he says, you did? He says, well, I thought, seeing as you're not drinking anymore, Sophia, he says you're not drinking, and why did you stop? He says, I was full, and I thought it it was time I stopped being an embarrassment. Sitting all, and Gil says, sitting around all day in your underwear, you mean? He says, no, I mean having this power and this duty, this purpose, and pissing it all away. I was Hercules. There was a time that mattered. Theresius still hasn't called, and Sophia says, Hercules, Hercules, Sophia, the police are here. Uh, Theresius has been attacked. Um, they found Hercules' business card at the scene. They don't think he's a suspect, but they think he might know something. So he basically tells them everything he knows, and then uh, he sees Athena again. Um, and then they go to see uh, Theresius in the hospital. Meanwhile, Gil is at uh, Hercules' apartment still and the phone rings and um, Gilgamesh decides he's going to get back in the game. And uh, Hercules explains that, you know, Theresius was born male, but the gods made him a, a woman too. He is both. They did this to give him a broad, broader perception of the truths of the world. Such an insight means that many have sought to silence him down the years. Uh, let me talk to, talk to you. Um... Um, Theresius explains that, uh, he didn't know exactly who attacked him, but he believes it's the storm. Um, the uprising is flesh now, sweetie, flesh and divine. I saw a thing, Herrick, a vision just before the uprising attacked me. You keep seeing bloody Athena because she's come to claim you, take you back to Olympus. Your long tenure on earth is over. The world is changing and there's no place in it for you anymore. You can't fight it, darling. You're going to die. I'm ever so sorry. I, he says, I've died before. I got better. Not like this. You can't bloody fight this. But we're immortals, both of us. And and he says, I am dying. Your time is coming. Immortality is running out. Will you do me a favor, love? Look after Tennyson for me when I'm gone. He says, the dog? No, the port laureate. Of course the bloody dog. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, Gilgamesh in Herc's outfit. looks. It's one of his old outfits because he's got the little... The little uh, skirt and the le- leather belt around his chest. Um, says hello, hello. Someone here called on the the tablet. They needed help. Hello, and your voice says, "Are you Hercules?" He says, "No, no. I am Gilgamesh, and I uh, I am a hero. And you need help. So that is all that matters. Gilgamesh. He will suffice. I smell the dust. Uh, I smell dust. The dust of ancient times. The era of Kura. Sanct- sanctuary caves and the fire in the first cities oh ah, dear this is a trap isn't it not at all all we truly we truly need help i am ire and you gilgamesh of somewhere are mine bind him and her like goblins attack him it says ergeld great i might have known a witch from the age of stone would bring cave wraiths with her i beat down their kin with ease through the ages of bronze and iron and darkness no reason I can't do it again here in the age of steel. I, and then he takes one across the jaw, says, ow, maybe I'm a little out of condition. You know, in this modern time, I hear people like to talk through problems before resorting to conflict. Maybe we could stop doing this and discuss. Womp. Um, and then she picks up her and says, do not weep, hero. Your lifeblood will save the world from the us- usurper gods. Raise him up, my Urgeld, and prepare him for sacrifice. Back to the Stone Age, next next issue. Um, very exciting. Um, I'm liking this. What what actually is interesting to me is that this is clearly not of the same uh, issues as discussed in the with the death of magic in um, Doctor Strange and um, Scarlet Witch. Although who knows, you may get a crossover eventually. Because um, uh, this seems to be just 
new gods replacing the old. And uh, really enjoyed it. Thumbs up. On Hercules, number three. And finally, my first book from this week. Oh, once again, a great book from The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, number four. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Opening up, um, we're in Planet Doom, formerly Earth. Um, and we see the guy who woke up uh, last issue saying, well, this does this isn't how I remember it. And he's going through his Doomopedia on his phone. Says, you know, uh, list of famous land landmarks, Mount Doom War, the Eiffel Tower of Doom, Doom Henge, the Great Doom of China, Statue of Doomerty, the Blue Doomed <laughs> Church, the Doom Maha Mahal, the large Doom Drum Collider, Sydney's Doom House featuring opera. Uh, and basically, it's a world filled with Doom bots. Meanwhile, back in the 60s, um, all of the people that Squirrel Girl had saved previously are, uh, and by throwing them into a pool, are all complaining because their phones are ruined and they're all wet. But they realize they have to figure out a way to defeat Dr. Doom. They realize they should steal his time machine, and they start thinking of various ways to attack him. And they go, we'll ride dinosaurs. And then someone points out that, you know, wild dinosaurs might not want to be ridden, so they should think, well, maybe we'll go to the future and get future weapons. And then it says, and then uh, Nancy Whitehead says, you know, now that I think about it, there are smarter ways to use a time machine to beat him. Like, and they have baby Dr. Doom in the crib, and it says, baby's first guide to world domination. And then they replace that book with the joy of listening quietly and compromising when appropriate. Um, <laughs> they realize that that's not going to work, or they realize that they need to get the time machine first. And, um, uh, you know, they also figure out a backup plan, which is that they're going to create an EMP device to disable his armor um uh tippy toe and um squirrel girl find uh doom h h hiding out in belvedere castle where he's building an army of proto doom bots using 1960s technology but still more than enough for him to conquer the world squirrel girl goes into fate to beat him and steals his time machine but finds out that it's that um you know, Doom has a failsafe on his time machine, which said it only allows travel into the future at a rate of one second per second. Um, uh, and then Doom and Squirrel Girl get into a fight, and Squirrel Girl or Doom is holding his own against her, and it takes a moment out to explain to Squirrel Girl, trying to say, you know, we, you know, let's find a compromise. Let's, you know, let's find a way to work this out. And Doom says, I, Doom does not compromise. I do not accept anything except for my own perfection. Yada yada. And showing him all the things that he's been able to create because he does not take, does not even consider the, the term no. Shows her his, uh, his doom, uh, programming language, which is just doom, 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 just other variations on the word doom. Um, he, he activates his doom bots. And then Nancy Whitehead and the crew come in with their, uh, EMP devices, which do not d disable the doom bots as they had hoped. Because, of course, Dr. Doom has a failsafe against EMPs because, really, um, you know, why wouldn't he? And then, and then this is what's interesting. We get two people arrive. First is the guy from the first scene. Um, uh, says, okay, that should do it. This should be the 60s, but I silence. Who dares to wear the armor of Doom? Uh, I, oh, holy crap, it's Dr. Doom. And, but then we see that someone has come with him who is also dressed as Dr. Doom, except it is actually Older Squirrel Girl! Dun, dun, dun! And well, they will do battle next issue. Older Squirrel Girl and Young Squirrel Girl do battle to save the past and the future in the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl number five. Looking forward to that. And coming soon, it's the big Squirrel Girl Howard the Duck uh, crossover episode in their mm. number six issue. Okay, and that was uh, the last of my new books for the week. Let's get to our two that we did together because we have been wait, doing it. Wait, wait. Oh, wait. What? I, I have one on my own. Oh, left. you have one more? Oh, great. Okay, so let's let's hear the extra book for the, the one more book from Phil. Thank you, Phil. Uh, okay. It's uh, Daredevil number three. Uh, I'll say right now, this was close to being my pick of the week, but my pick of the week probably inched it out by a hair or two. But uh, <clears throat> it opens up once again where we left off with. Uh, uh, Daredevil and uh, Ten Fingers and his crew surrounded by the hand. Uh, 
Matt's like, all these people are going to die. So uh, Matt tells t- Ten Fingers, get all your people and get them to run. And uh, Ten Fingers is like, nonsense, Daredevil. We're all perfectly safe. I have foreseen it. So <laughs> Ten Fingers convinces his enforcers to go after the hand. And Matt's like, idiots. <laughs> When the hand shows up, you don't run towards them. He's like, but am I also an idiot? He's like, he's like, I could just stand here and let them, let the hand take out ten fingers. He's like, but what am I going to do? Let him fight it out. And he's like, nah, life's a life. And in my presence, if there's anything I can do about it, no one dies. Not in my city. And so they're all going after the hand. And uh, with his hyper senses, he sees blind spots like up above, invisible. And he's like, good, at least the kid's safe. And then, uh. But then Blindspot jumps into the fight and he's like, fabulous. How many training sessions have we had? 20 maybe? He's like, I hope he was paying attention. <laughs> uh, more fight. Uh, one of the hands says, Daredevil, you've thrown in with the thief. He's like, I'm not with 10 fingers, but I won't let you kill him either. And the hand says, there is no difference. Not to the hand. Uh, so then he said, the hand says, all those who stand with 10 fingers are marked for death. And Daredevil says, we'll see. Yes, devil, we will. Well, was uh, already marked for death by the hand, or did he get unmarked? For I don't know, because, I mean, there was that period where he was kind of possessed and he was working with the hand. Uh, it gets ah, fuzzy. It gets fuzzy. Okay. But I guess he's double marked now. Yes. Oh, we're going to kill you twice now, dear devil. <laughs> so they're fighting, fighting, and Matt's thinking, you know, Ten Fingers put all these people in trouble. He wants them to put their faith their faith in him and uh but he must have known this was gonna happen he's a monster uh so they're fighting but then the hand does their disappearing act because that matt's like damn it they're gonna do their disappearing act they're getting away wait a minute what the hell am i thinking they're doing their disappearing act thank god (laughs) uh then ten fingers is like you see they all fled just like i said i knew no we weren't in danger and uh Matt tells his people, he's lying to you. You all have targets on your backs. They don't give up. And Ten Fingers is like, oh, you poor deluded man. Believe what you like. It's all right. I forgive you. Uh, and then later on the rooftop, uh, Blindspot shows up and uh, comes up behind Daredevil. And he's like, hello, Blindspot. And Blindspot's like, will you ever tell me how you always know where I am? And Matt's like, probably not. <laughs> He's like, you did well. The hand are a serious opponent. And Blindspot's like, who's the hand? The gang? And he's like, not exactly. They're an ancient Japanese ninja clan. They worship a demon they call the beast. And in return, he gives them supernatural powers. Blindspot's like, huh, right on. <laughs> and, uh... No, wait, they're partners. And this is the first Daredevil's mentioning the hand. It's like, you know, oh, by the way, there's a clan of, you know, uh, ninjas who I have an ongoing beef with. So... Just well, I guess up. I, I would think that would be like you know lesson one. Oh. Yeah. Well, wait. Like, well, I guess he's maybe he's trying to keep him away from them because I don't know how long they've been working together because he said they might have had twenty sessions together. So. Yeah. But yeah. I so know. I mean, even if they have a session every day, that's still the first session. That's what I'm saying. First session. Mention the hand. You know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Matt's telling him. Uh, Something one of the hands said back there. I think Ten Fingers was one of them once. He stole some of their power. That must be why he's got the extra fingers. And Blindspot's like, you know that doesn't really make any sense, right? <laughs> and Matt's like, not in the world you're used to, maybe. It doesn't mind, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> uh, So Matt's like trying to say, you know, Ten Fingers had to know this was going to happen. So why? What's he doing? What's his end game? And, uh, and Blindspot's probably going to stop this. And Matt's like, just notices that uh blind spots hurt i think he has a cut on his side or something but uh matt's like you need to go to the hospital and uh blind spots like sure thing you remember when i told you i don't have papers which means i can't get a real job which means i can't get insurance he's like so sure if you can spare uh 20 grand to loan me for an er visit i'll head right over otherwise it's band-aids and advil and uh matt's like no there's another way you have a phone on you and uh blind spots like yeah man i have a phone i'm I'm illegal not amish (laughs) So uh, Matt gives him a number. He's like, here, this is a, her name's Linda. She she helps people like us when we get hurt on the job. And uh, Blindspot's like, you're kidding. We got a school nurse. <laughs> and uh, Daredevil's like, not exactly. He's like, he's like, and Blindspot, listen to me. This is all, this all just got pretty damn serious. He's like, maybe you were in school before, but as of right now, you've graduated. <laughs> uh, And then we, 
then I, I'm guessing this is the next day. Matt's talking to his uh, boss, the district attorney, uh, Mr. Hawkberg, and uh, Hawkberg's telling him he let him down because he's, I guess now the feds can't prosecute Ten Fingers because their uh, witness recanted, and uh, he's telling him, Matt, you screwed up. Dear God, did you screw up? So uh, he, he's putting him on, uh, until further notice, he's on ECAB. And Matt's like, ECAB, those are minor cases. Don't you think my skills could be better used? And he's like, skills? I haven't seen any skills yet, Mr. Murdoch. He's like, I've heard about him, but I haven't seen him. He's like, ECAB, until further notice. So Matt leaves the office, and he's just like, he's like, I traded Kirsten, which was his girlfriend in the last year. He's like, I traded Kirsten for this, and maybe Foggy's friendship, too. He's like, what am I doing? He's like, you give up everything for a new beginning. This is what you're making of it. <laughs> Once again, says he gave up everything for a new beginning, but we don't know how he got this new beginning. Yeah. Uh, so basically, I guess, ECAB is, uh, he was saying, he's, he's stuck on night court duty. He's like, how are you even supposed to be Daredevil if you have to be at the courthouse all night? <laughs> oh, uh, so he's going to be band fielding. <laughs> but uh, then Ellen comes up and uh, she's like, there's someone waiting in your office. And Matt's like, who is it? She's like, brace yourself. And who is it? Mr. Murdoch, nice to see you. It's Ten Fingers. Ah, uh, yes. He's like, my name is Ten Fingers, because Matt's like, I don't know who you are. Lying. He's like, I don't know who you are. I'm blind as a bat. He's like, I'm Ten Fingers. I've been waiting such a long time to meet you. I was hoping to clear up a misunderstanding. You seem to think I'm some sort of villain. To be continued. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And the last page, you know, the, what you don't want to know what happens next. <laughs> what happens it next? Looks- it looks like there's a guest star because it's Daredevil leaping away from an explosion with She Hulk. Steve Steve Rogers. O- old Steve? Well, yeah, he has the gray hair, but oh. he's looking pretty oh, yeah, pretty he's, muscular. He, he he's like super buff old Steve now. <laughs> yeah. But uh like I said, big thumbs up on this book. It was all it, another week it could have been my pick of the week, but just slightly edged out. So Sounds really good. Okay. Um wanna do Avengers or Old Man Logan next? Uh, let's do all new, all different Avengers number okay. four. I'm going to say this was my pick of the week. Hmm. Yeah. And it was tight in that, you know, partially it's because it is one of my few books that actually came out this week. Um, uh, mm-hmm. but also because, you know, there are, there are qualities of it. There are some qualities I don't like, uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. keep that Nova away from my Kamala. Bad Nova. Um, uh-huh. But, uh, you know, but aside from that, what I, what I, but, so anyway, so we're opening up the book with a uh, good old Edwin Jarvis waking up, um, in New York, apparently, cause he has to drive into New Jersey to go to the new Avengers compound. He's like, sigh. Um, we see that Edwin's mother is still alive and well, though she has a nurse. Um, he tells him not to be late on his first date. Uh, I'm wondering if they're living in Avengers Mansion. I guess that would make sense, you know. It's a museum now, so yes. So, um, so he gets up, he gets dressed, gets in his little uh, Peugeot, and uh, drives down to an abandoned Stark Industries airfield in New, in somewhere in New Jersey. And Jay, that's where the Avengers are located, New Jersey. And you mean event? You mean the new Avengers headquarters? New Avengers headquarters, an old abandoned Stark Industries hangar. Says, welcome to Avengers headquarters. And we got everyone pitching in to spruce up the place. It's, oh. it's like, a, uh, it's, it's like an old Andy Rooney mu- musical. We're going to put on a show. And Jarvis is basically like, you know, um, I really don't need to be here. I'm, I'm sure the children can microwave their own popcorn and, you know, you know, you don't really need me in the command center. And, uh, you know, meanwhile, uh, Kamala and uh, Miles are discussing like how weird like Vision is because he's all robot-y now and um, you know uh, Kamala's like you know he's one of the big guns I'm a fan but he's not at all like I expected he's just robotic cold and cold he used to be married to the Scarlet Witch can you even imagine it's like picturing an iPad in in wedding it went in wedding bliss and of course Nova, Nova says I like him since Nova's of course being blackmailed by him um, and Jarvis points out that there's apparently a hurricane hitting uh, Atlantic City right now. So the Avengers assemble and they fly out to get there. And of course, Thor is running into battle. 
Um, and this is what I actually see. This is the thing I liked about it is is the way that they're depicting Thor in this. Um, separate from, separate from kind of what we've seen in the Thor comic. Although honestly, I think that we did get a good bit of that in the last issue when she's talking about this is why there needs to be a Thor, and here we and so I'm. Uh, in my in my head canon, I'm kind of seeing this as taking place after that. We see the uh, team working hard to rescue people as Kamala and Miles go to take out um, what's this guy's name? Cyclone. Um, and and uh, they actually do a pretty good job, and Kamala slugs him, which uh, knocks him out pretty well. Thrown with the proportional strength and speed of a spider, and she basically embiggens her fists to beat him. All the way down. Um, but he apparently <laughs> slows himself out, down and they hit the pavement. But then, um, she, you know, the Vision approaches him and makes himself hyper dense and then shoves his hand through the Cyclone's heart. Uh, yeah. To which Tony says, he's just unconscious. It's mm-hmm. okay. And then they all get together and we see the, the, the internet come to life over, over in the stairs. It says, whoop de doo rescued by the understudy of Avengers. Where are the real ones, man? The world's getting so politically correct these days. And uh, you have Sam saying to um, Thor, says, did you hear that? After we saved their lives, let them be ungrateful. What does it matter? I know, I know. I, it's just I'm trying to reach people, you know, and sometimes it feels impossible. You haven't told us where you come from, but you must get the when's the real one coming back cracks too. Doesn't that get under your skin. See, and I think this is one of the reasons why it really spoke to me, is it does have Sam just put it out there. Um, and especially since we know, yeah, the real one's coming back. Uh, 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 says, ha, from one warrior to another, Captain, you fret too much. And then she plants a big wet one on him. Says, you certainly taste like I would imagine a Captain America to taste. Says, uh, you taste like a goddess. Did you not enjoy it? This is absolutely, but why? Because I felt like it. Always act on your impulses, Sam Wilson. Life's candle burns too briefly not to live in the moment. Avengers, until our paths cross again. And, um, as he says, an odd statement coming from an immortal. Um, and they do the cleanup and then Tony says, sorry, it just hit me. Life's candle burns too briefly. I realized don't know much about our new Ellie, but now that Vincent's mentioned it, mentioned it, that is an awfully strange thing for a supposed immortal to say, and it makes me nervous. Is she really who she claims to be? Next, one from seven. Um, and do you think, uh, yeah, sorry, I was going to say, do you think Thor's really attracted to uh, Sam, or is it just because he's the only adult male on the team who isn't a synthesoid or Tony Stark? Um, I think she's as attracted to him as, you know, they made the comment here that, you know, um, Thor reminds them more of Hercules than Odin's son. And, you know, if you recall good old party hardy Hercules, he was uh, more than happy to (laughs) plant one on a fellow heroine, Um, you know, so I don't. I don't know if she feels like um, Sam is, you know, a guy that's making her feel all butterflies in the stomach, but I think other parts of her have butterflies, and mm-hmm. why not kiss him? Because you know what? If you if you had the opportunity to kiss Cap- Captain America, might not you do so too? Um, so, yeah. No, I just, I really liked it. It, it really kind of, it, you know what? I really like this team of, of Avengers. I like I like the fact that it is, you know, there is a lot of youth on the team. Although, you know, like I say, I'm watching you. Know, I'm probably influenced too much by the Nova on um, on the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, but still, uh, yes, <laughs> I don't trust him. You know, um, I think Seth Green voices that Nova, and just can't get Seth Green out of my head. <laughs> but um, but I really like this. I liked I like the interplay between. I like I like the everyone's interplay with um, each other and and I do like the fact that I, Vision's up to something I don't know what but he's up to something probably something that's going to tie into mm-hmm. that Vision series that's getting all the raves out there. Everyone says, "Oh, it's not really part of everything because it's this whole other side thing." It's like, no, I think everything's going to connect by the end of it. But anyway, that was my pick of the week, and I guess next we're going to your pick of the week. That's right, Old Man Logan number one. Yes. 
So, do you want to tell us about it? Uh, okay. Well, basically, there's a white light, and then Old Man Logan wakes up naked in Times Square on this Earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, did it strike you as odd? Well, I guess so. Here, here's what I'll say. Because, of course, when we saw him from the Old Man Logan series, it was a different waking up scene. Um, so that, so that's like the, that's the first thing that kind of struck me on this, but then it, I guess maybe he's just waking up again or I don't know. So that's, that's one thing that kind of confused me on this is that it wasn't played out of that scene. I scene. just, I just think maybe cause I think it was a different writer and like may, they might've just been like, okay, where are you going to start the old man Logan series? And they probably just told him oh, he's going to wake up in times square. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that might've been it. That's what I'm thinking. I like that he wakes up naked in this too. <laughs> Which, again, I don't think he was naked in the previous uh, ending, so... No. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. But, uh, but uh, yeah, it causes, causes a stir. The cops try to tase him. He doesn't go down. Uh, a lot of times I don't like flashbacks, but I think they they did... They made good use of the flashbacks in this story. Mm-hmm. No, uh, yeah, I really, liked, I really liked the way that they did set it up, although... I will say, and again, it's this, um, it's an interesting, they kind of play with the continuity in this story a bit, mm-hmm. um, which I guess is, is fair and you have to. Um, I also find it kind of weird that he's saying that it's like only three years from when it all is supposed to go down. Um, you know, when, when he, when he, when he arrives. So, um, given that the original story took place, you know, a while ago and, at that time, it actually had Bucky Cap in the uh, Captain America uniform. So, um, <laughs> but then again, yeah. But yeah, I just I just thought maybe between Secret Wars and with time being as fluid as it is, every time there's like a change in the present, like his memories change. Oh yeah, well, and, that, and that's the thing, and 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 you definitely, I definitely get that idea here that this is a different um, variation on the old man is like it's the old man logan theme but it's definitely a different aspect of it um one of the things that brings up is when they go to the butcher's market is the butcher an actual villain or they just create him for this scene uh series to, to kill him off here i didn't recognize him so i i'm pretty i would think he's a new villain if i don't recognize him and you don't recognize him I'm pretty sure he's a yeah, well, I figured that oh maybe he's an X like he's a X Men villain, and so that's why I've never heard of him. You know, um, no, I I don't think. But um, because I, th- I thought he said something about oh you, because in the future didn't he say something like yeah you you were barely on the Avengers radar or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm guess maybe he's some minor villain from the Avengers past. But um, one of the things I saw thought that was kind of interesting here. And again, it's one of these things that differentiates it from the original Old Man Logan run on this one is the, you know, Butcher calling out that Logan was a superhero and that this is something that is sort of a known quantity in this world. Whereas in the other, um, in the original Old Man Logan series by, um, uh, Millar, um, you know, it was who Logan was wasn't the known, it wasn't, people didn't know who Logan was. They did know about the heroes mm-hmm. and there was some, references to the heroes left but they weren't people weren't talking about oh logan he's wolverine he was one of these superheroes but now mm-hmm. he's now he's all neutered well, yeah but uh but uh did you catch the batman reference in here too oh i love that yes yes uh for those who don't know um logan decides to uh go out to seek revenge because he realizes that he's got the chance to fix things and of course, when he leaps out, they do this great homage to the Dark Knight Returns. You've got the big bolt of lightning um, uh, coming across the sky as the silhouetted Logan claws pops leaps across it. It, it is really a nice, beautiful uh, bit of homage uh, there. Um, certainly worth it. And then uh, <laughs> I kind of like the idea that you know I'm killing you because you're going to hit my kid. <laughs> What? Yeah, and I will say once again, the artwork in this is just fantastic. Um, oh yeah, I mean it is just it is just beautiful. And uh... but uh, my 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 only problem with this was the last page where he he's using the sharpie to make the list on his arm. Yeah. So of of course the butcher is going to be the first on your list because he was like really not much of a threat. But 
Really? The Hulk is the second on your list? Well, it's or an, Mysterio or the Red Skull? It's in alphabetical order. Uh, oh, yeah, that's Oh, actually, true. no, it's not but, uh, alphabetical order. It's just, yeah. Yeah, no, because, yeah, because the Butcher's, yeah. Well, I, I'm guessing it's based on who actually has some ties to him, maybe. And I guess, you know, I, what, here's what's interesting in this, okay? So... Mm-hmm. Going after the butcher, it's because he saw the hat. So that was what was on his mind. Going after Banner, Banner killed his family. So that's why he's number two. Mysterio, of course, kill is the person who convinced him to kill the X-Men, but he, he has time before Mysterio does that. And, of course, Red Skull was the mastermind behind the whole thing. So I guess his, his theory on that is he has time before he has to take out the Red Skull, too. Um, although one could argue if you just took out the Red Skull first, then all that worked out just fine. But then, you know, I guess it's a much shorter book. Although, um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, no, I mean, yeah, I, I, I was less, and uh, there's no guarantee that he's going to do it in that order. Although I guess they do say next is the Hulk. Although we see the Hulk he goes after is. Amadeus Cho, because he doesn't know any better. Yeah. Oh, Hulk's a Hulk. Any Hulk in a storm, I guess. And, um. I wonder how, the, wonder how they're going to deal with that. If they're going to, uh, if by that point, uh, Totally awesome Hulk's going to explain where Bruce Banner actually is at, or yeah. Well, I think this is going to be sort of the thing here is he's going to realize that whatever world he was from, this isn't it. That you know things are yeah too much out of uh, out of whack from what it once was. Um, now, this you know I really liked this book. I liked it a lot. I, I get you. I think the only reason why I probably put uh, Avengers four above this one is just because I felt that. The characterization that we got from Avengers Four was new and was new and different and interesting to me. It sort of called out mm-hmm. a couple meta things that I thought were would be on the minds of these characters. Whereas this one, you know, this is just sort of setting up the plot. It's an intriguing plot, but it is just set up, and it's like there's there's nothing new here for me um, beyond just being a gorgeous, well written book. You know, it is a gorgeous, well written book, but you know. Marvel's got pretty high standards now. It takes more than just being gorgeous and well written to uh, be my pick of the week. But I will say that this was probably a really close uh, possibility of the pick of the week. You know, I usually don't know what my pick of the week is until we're actually uh, reading them. You know, like uh, discussing mm-hmm. right now. So, <sighs> but that's all of our books. Good gods. Oh, are you still with us? Are you still awake out there, <laughs> listeners? Did you have to stop this halfway through the commute to come back to it? So you- <laughs> On the commute back home, listening to the rest of this. Hope, hopefully, you like long episodes because that's what we've been giving you lately. But <laughs> blame Marvel if you don't, not us. All right, so so let's get out of here. Uh, if you want to uh, contact us uh, about anything, because I think there are still more books out there that we don't we don't even review, and it's just, uh. So if there's anything we're not hitting, and you want to send us in your review, we'll read it on the air. Uh can email us marvel roundup at gmail.com on facebook we're all new marvel roundup and on twitter we're at marvel underscore roundup and of course you can find me all over southgate media group uh podcasting and blogging about marvel dc um and i've also started a uh have i'm gonna have a piece every week on tvbinges.com now where i do a quick breakdown of the uh superhero tv shows of the week but the easiest way to get a hold of me is to email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. And on Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. Charlie? And, of course, you can always tweet along with me with uh, Agent Carter at Charlie Esser, C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R, for the two E's in the middle for quality. And, of course, if you ever want to write to me, please do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. All right. Is that it? That's all there is. Ain't no more. <laughs> <laughs> Better hope so. All right, everyone. Uh, come back next week. Uh, at least on my end, I think it's uh, it's going to be... A, I didn't have a big week this week, but I think it's a big week next week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so including the all, uh, Spider-Man number one with Miles Morales. So yep. come back. Come, come back next week, everyone. Don't make us hunt. Don't make us uh, hunt you down like old man Logan. Good night.